From the Tribune News Network, this is News Break. I'm Krishna Russell. Former Prime Minister Perry Christie said in a new Canadian television program that he has no fear of any investigation into his conduct in public life concerning Peter Nygaard. He spoke via phone interview with reporters for CBC Television's The Fifth Estate, an episode of which aired last week. Mr. Christie told those reporters, quote, I spent 43 years in public life. There's no equivocation about my commitment to integrity. So I just want to be able to say it clearly and as strongly as I possibly can. I have no fear of any investigation into my conduct in public life. Full stop. During the episode, several clips of Nygaard and Mr. Christie together are shown. One video shows Mr. Christie at the wedding of one of Mr. Nygaard's daughters in Winnipeg, Canada in 2011. During a speech at that event, Mr. Christie, then leader of the opposition, described Nygaard as a significant personality in the Bahamas, known for his philanthropy. Another video clip showed Mr. Christie meeting Nygaard in Las Vegas. The episode also shows Nygaard celebrating the Progressive Liberal Party's 2012 election victory. A man was killed in a police-involved shooting yesterday after he attempted to evade officers, the Royal Bahamas Police Force has said. The incident occurred after 5 p.m. when police received reports of a disturbance at the Bahamas Hot Rod Association situated at Corridor 7 between Bethel Avenue and Yellow Elder Way. Units were dispatched and on their arrival, they found a gathering. Assistant Superintendent Audley Peters told the Tribune by phone that the gathering breached COVID-19 protocols and police were trying to force the patrons to leave that area. Mr. Peters said, quote, as a result of this gathering, the officers established a checkpoint at the entrance of the venue. And as vehicles were leaving the entrance of that venue itself, officers made checks of those vehicles along with the persons. One such vehicle in an attempt to evade the officers at the checkpoint accelerated his vehicle towards those officers. And as a result, the officers beckoned him to stop and he failed to do so. So the officers, he said, pulled their service weapons and discharged it at the occupant of the vehicle. The vehicle itself was driven some 300 yards further west along Corridor 7, where it crashed along the northern wall. EMS took the man to hospital, where he later died. The government's gross borrowings leapt fourfold year over year to more than $2 billion during the six months to end 2020, it was revealed yesterday, exceeding what was projected for the full fiscal year. The so-called fiscal snapshot and report for the 2020-2021 first half, which covers the first six months from July 1 last year, disclosed the Minutes administration borrowed a total of $2.12 billion compared to just $530.9 million during the same period period in the prior fiscal year. However, Marlon Johnson, the Ministry of Finance's acting financial secretary, told the Tribune there was nothing to be alarmed about. He argued that while the gross borrowing figures had been released for public consumption, the critical number from the government's perspective was its net borrowing. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs says it has no reports of Bahamians being stuck in Canada after airlines there cancelled Caribbean flights. Canadian Premier Justin Trudeau recently announced the country's main airlines, Air Canada, WestJet and Sunwing, were cancelling all services to Caribbean destinations and to Mexico, so-called sun destinations, until April 30th. The Canadian government has also mandated new testing and three-day quarantine periods upon arrival in the country in response to concerns about new coronavirus variants. In a statement issued over the weekend, the Bahamian ministry sought to clarify some social media accusations, which claimed there was no Bahamian high commissioner in Canada to assist those seeking to return home as Alvin Smith returned to the Bahamas last year after completing his tour of duty in November. The statement noted the ministry wishes to clarify that while there is currently no high commissioner in Canada, there is a very competent foreign service officer in the post, Michelle Brown, who is serving as charge d'affaires until high commissioner designate Kenneth Russell is in the post. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, President Joe Biden is to meet today with a group of 10 Republican senators who have proposed $618 billion in coronavirus aid, about a third of the $1.9 trillion he is seeking as congressional Democrats are poised to move ahead without GOP support. The Republican group's proposal focuses on the pandemic's health effects rather than its economic toll, tapping into bipartisan urgency to shore up the nation's vaccine distribution and vastly expanding virus testing with $160 billion in in aid. Their slimmed down $1,000 direct payments would go to fewer households than the $1,400 Biden has proposed, and they would avoid costly assistance to states and cities that Democrats argue are just as important. 
A social media death threat aimed at an 11-year-old environmental activist has roused outrage in Colombia, a nation where attacks on social leaders are common and threats are taken seriously. Colombian officials said they are investigating the death threat against Francisco Vera and the president, recently promised in a television appearance that his government would find the bandits behind that Twitter message. For his part, the boy says he will continue to lead environmental campaigns and urged other young people to use social media to support causes they believe even. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. An active cold front along with its associated prefrontal trough will generate pockets of disturbed weather and windy conditions across portions of the island chain as the system moves into the northwest Bahamas through tonight. Boaters in the northwest and central Bahamas are urged to remain in port and beachgoers should refrain from entering the waters due to strong gusty winds, high seas, rough surf and the risk of dangerous rip currents. Motorists and pedestrians should exercise caution while traversing coastal roadways. In the northwest and central Bahamas, it'll be mostly cloudy and very windy, with widely scattered showers along with isolated thunderstorms ahead and along the frontal boundary through tonight. Showers may be locally heavy and thunderstorms strong to severe at times. Small craft operators should also remain in port. Winds south to southwest at 15 to 25 knots ahead of the cold front, shifting west-southwest to west-northwest at 20 to 30 knots with gusts to gale force behind Behind the cold front. Seas 5 to 8 feet over the ocean ahead of the front, building 8 to 12 feet behind the front. In the southeast Bahamas, it'll be partly cloudy, warm, and breezy, with a few isolated showers through tonight. A small craft advisory is in effect due to swells. A small craft caution will come into effect tonight. Winds south southeast to south southwest at 15 knots this afternoon, shifting southwest to west at 15 to 20 knots tonight. Seas 3 feet to 5 feet near shore, building up to 8 feet and subsiding north to northeast easterly swells this afternoon, subsiding 4 to 7 feet tonight. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 81 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 64. The sun will set at 553 and will rise tomorrow morning at 652. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets, or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.